Hi everyone, I'm Nico from the Decentraland team, and in this video I want to show you a few more advanced tools you can use in the builder to take your scenes to a whole new level. So everything we're going to see now is in this toolbox asset back here, and you'll see that most of these things are really invisible in your scene, except a few of them that are meant to be more like cues to show your users how to use your scene. Let's start by using the trigger area. This is transparent when you're using it in the, you know, the edit mode, but if you run a preview of your scene, you'll see that it's completely invisible. This is because all this really does is create an area that can trigger things whenever players enter or leave this cube. So this is great to, for example, trigger a door to be opened every time that you walk up to it. So let's make the door open when you go into the cube and let's make the door close whenever you walk out of the cube. So now I'm not going to click or anything, I'm just going to walk up to the door and it opens. Great. So let's look at some of the other tools we got here. The invisible wall was covered in another video, but what's pretty cool about it that I want to show you is that you can actually enable and disable an invisible wall. So what this does is it prevents players to, from being able to walk through different parts of your scene which might prevent them from walking through some, some item that you added yourself, and it could also prevent them from walking into some other area of your scene, for example. With this, we can stop players from walking up into the roof. But suddenly, we could add a lever that disables this. Through this lever, we can call the invisible wall and Disable it. So now I can't go up onto the roof, but if I click this lever here, I actually can. Cool. So another cool thing we can add is a click area. So what this does is it also creates an invisible area in your scene. And this can actually be walked through by players, but it can. But if you click into this invisible cube, you can trigger things as you would with other smart items. So we can make this roughly the size of this Land Rover here. And with that, we can actually pretend that this is a smart item itself, even though this Rover isn't really interactive or smart at all. It doesn't have any properties of its own, but this invisible area does. So we can then see what we can do with that. But the really powerful thing here in the toolbox is this tools smart item. This is invisible as well. And we can actually drag this to any part of the scene we want. And we can use it as many times as we want. We just need one of these to be here in the scene. And it doesn't have any properties or any actions of its own if we look at its own you know, contextual menu, but we can call it through other things in our scene. And you can see that if we open it, it opens a whole Pandora's box. Let's add a second action to this, um, to this lever we had here. And let's call it Tools. And you'll see that there's a ton of things we can do here. Let's start with, a simpler, with one of the simpler ones, which is to print a message. And let's tell the players that... Let's just tell the players that the rooftop is now open whenever the lever is activated. And we can leave this message on screen for as many seconds as we want. And through this setting, we can actually show this message to everyone in the scene and not just to the player who clicked on the lever. So if we go and click this here, we'll see that we just had this little text printed in the bottom of the screen. And it disappears after the amount of seconds have gone by. And if we had several of these messages, they keep piling up down there on the lower part of the UI. So it's fine to have several of them coming up at the same time. They won't overwrite each other. But you'll see that the tool, this toolbox here can actually do a whole lot more. Um, so let, let's go back to our clickable area we had here. Let's actually move an item through this tools little box here. So let's select the rover. And we can now tell it 
how much to move and in what direction. So the x, y, and z refers to the coordinates in the scene. So x is this way, z is this way, and y is upwards. So if we want to move it forward, we can tell it to go in the z direction, just one meter. We can set a different speed, and we can also make this movement be not relative, but absolute. So if we had, had this off, we wouldn't be moving it to one meter in relation to where it is right now, but we'd be moving it to the 001 coordinate in the scene, which would be almost in the corner of the scene. So let's try that out. If we now click on the rover, it moves forward. That's pretty cool. Now keep in mind that the clickable area isn't moving with a rover. So if I click on it now again, it won't move. But if I click here where a rover used to be, the rover will move. We could also move the clickable area together with a rover as a second action. So we could just go into the click area at another action and call the same move item function of the tools and move the clickable area instead of the rover. So a few other things you can do with this tools item here. You can rotate things, you can scale things. You can delay an action, which is also really helpful. So instead of triggering something right away when you click something or when you walk up to something or whatever, you can make things wait for as many seconds as you want before they happen. And you can also set an interval. So through this, you can make something happen regularly at a definite amount of seconds. And yeah, that could also be a great way to play with something. So for example, let's make our rover move indefinitely as soon as we, we clicked it for the first time. So let's make the rover move every two seconds. And on every one of these two seconds, we just call the tools again. And we move the rover just as we did before. So now the rover just start moving and keep moving without me having to do anything. Of course, the rover will eventually go out of the scene bounds and that's probably not great, but this is just an example. One last thing I could do to make this a bit more obvious to players is to add a little arrow to indicate that this is something clickable because of course these rovers aren't usually clickable. So we need to give players a hint, some kind of like indication that there's something you can do with this rover. Otherwise, there's, there's no way they can really tell that this is something interactive. So by adding one of these hints, you can yeah, make the life of your players easier and they'll really appreciate all the work you put into your scene. So I also want to make this hint disappear whenever you actually click on the rover. So let's go back into our clickable area and we'll add one more action. Sorry, I added too many actions. Let's remove this one. And let's call our arrow and hide it. So now you see this little hint arrow floating over the rover, just telling me that there's something I can do with it. So when I click on it, the arrow disappears. Awesome, so that's all I wanted to show you today. I hope that with this, you can do really cool things. I hope you can have a lot of fun exploring all of the options that this offers and unleashing the potential of the builder. Thanks for watching and goodbye.